We've got some information, you know, about certain things, and this was a tip that was given to us. Uh, Patrick Wilson, it's a he said, she said deal that we 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 gathered that information um, so far. Um, and I believe this come from a, is it a Darren Williams? Is that is that correct? It's, uh, it's Daryl. Darren Williams. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you know Daryl? Yes. Okay. How yes. do you? This is Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies. Oh my gosh, you guys. Today we have so much stuff to get into. I'm also going to give you an update on the Stephen Smith case. So let's get started. I understand why the people are scared, why they don't want to talk about Alex Murdoch or the Murdochs in South Carolina. It's very, very scary. And I'm going to just go ahead and CYA and put my disclaimer at the front. Thing I'm sharing with you is my opinion and opinions are not facts. So please don't send any negativity to anyone. Let's be kind to each other. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I'm also going to play a 911 call. This is new since Alex Murdoch has been tried for doing away with Paul and Maggie. Today we're going back to two suspects that we covered in the Stephen Smith Alex Murdoch case. You are welcome to review the Reporter Room Alex Murdoch playlist. For more information, I will link it for you in the description below. Stephen was found on July 8th of 2015 by a tow truck driver lying in the middle of Sandy Run Road near Alex Murdoch's hunting lodge, Moselle. He had a laceration on his forehead and a blow it looked like to the back of his head. This was initially ruled a hit and run. However, some very interesting claims were being made about the Murdoch family involvement, including Alex Murdoch and Randy Murdoch both being at the crime scene that night. Buster Murdoch and the Murdoch name was mentioned around 40 times in various law enforcement and court documents. At the end of the Alex Murdoch trial, where he was found guilty of doing away with his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division also called also called SLED, announced that they were reopening the Stephen Smith investigation. Now, Stephen Smith's mom, Sandy, has always contended that Randy Murdoch was inexplicably at the crime scene that night and that Randy had offered to be the liaison between the Smith family and law enforcement for free. This raised a lot of eyebrows because when was the last time an attorney offered you free services? So Sandy raised enough money to conduct her own autopsy for her son, Stephen, and Stephen was exhumed. I'm going to play that 911 call between Alex and Buster Murdoch for you in just a moment. So please stay with me. The second autopsy confirmed a laceration on Steve's forehead, the damage to the back of his head, along with the presence of road rash on both of his arms. Now, the second autopsy has still not been released to the public. However, it appears that Stephen was struck on the head and that this impact is what led to Stephen's demise. Now, Stephen was a nursing student who attended high school with Buster. Buster has denied any involvement in what happened to Stephen. So who hit Stephen? So it appears that Stephen's injuries may have been caused by a large extended side mirror on a pickup truck. This is according to reporting by Fitz News. Now, let's go back to Daryl Williams, Sean Connolly, and Patrick Austin. Those of you that have been with this channel for a while know who I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry, I'm going to catch you up. So according to former police officer Nick Jin, he received a phone call from Daryl Williams, the stepfather of Patrick Austin. Now, stepfather... Daryl claimed that his stepson told him that he and a friend named Sean were driving their truck and hit Stephen. Daryl was reportedly urged to come forward by none other than Randy Murdaugh. And I'm going to dive into a little bit more of that in just a second. So please stay with me. So stepfather Daryl claimed that his stepson Patrick and his friend Sean hit Stephen with their truck and that he was told by his stepson Patrick. In fact, according to Fitz News, Mark Burkhart, who claims he was Stephen's boyfriend at the time, said that Stephen told him that night while they were on the phone about a couple of, quote, rednecks in a pickup truck who were bothering slash harassing Stephen at Snyder's Crossing on Highway 63. This phone call reportedly 
occurred the night Stephen was hit back in 2015. What do you think? Is this a coincidence? Because I think not. Also going to play a 911 call. This is new since Alex Murdoch has been tried for doing away with Paul and Maggie. This is a 911 call between Buster and Alex Murdoch. I'm going to play that for you in just a moment, so please stay with me. Now, Eric Bland, who was the attorney representing Stephen's mom, Sandy, announced back in June that there was a grand jury impaneled. However, we haven't heard anything more about this. So after the attempted murder charges, and this is where it's a little bit sketchy because Randy Murdoch urged stepfather Daryl to come forward and stepson Patrick had attempted murder charges pending against him. However, once the attempted murder charges were dropped against stepson Patrick by a quote Murdoch friendly judge, he, Daryl, the stepfather, recanted, took back his whole story. And this raised a lot of questions about a quid pro quo, which just basically means you do me a favor, I'll do you a favor. The quid pro quo was especially concerning because it was Randy Murdoch who reportedly urged stepfather Daryl to come forward with this story and that the story was immediately recanted as soon as the, the attempted murder charges were dropped. Now, it's worth noting, though, that Patrick and Sean both live near where Stephen was found. And Fitz News is reporting, quote, information obtained by SLED investigators has reportedly drawn a sharper focus on them as potential suspects. So what do you think? Do you think that Patrick and Sean could have had something to do with what happened to Stephen. Let's listen in on this new jailhouse call between Buster and his father, Alex. Hey, buddy. Hey, I don't have a whole lot of time. I just boarded a ferry to get back to North Carolina. I'm just busting. Yeah, I know. I, I've been trying to call. I was supposed to call you while you were with Jim um, about this meeting. But anyway, um, how about text him and let him know I'm trying to call him? Did he talk to you about that? About the thing about telling him? No, I can't. I can't really understand you either. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to meet one of you, Jim, and he'll be in touch with you. Love you. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. What do you think? Please subscribe and leave me a comment in the comment section below. See you next time. Bye.